uh good evening wherever you are tuned in in africa and uh in other parts of the world uh i may not be able to figure out the time in every zone but uh, i welcome you to our nightly presentation this is sammy wilberforce and uh this evening or tonight i'll be looking at something uh called in the beginning genesis 1 1 you wonder why I have to deal with it, but uh, march on it as we go through the presentation. And so I'll uh, welcome us to pray and then begin the presentation. Our Heavenly Father, once again, glory and honor be unto thy name. Thank you for Lord the rains and thank you for the good weather. Thank you for the gift of family and uh, even more so the larger family. As we explore your word, again, we ask of thy spirit to be able to guide us, that we may not speak of our own. Lord, teach me, and let me be a tool through which you will present your message to thy people. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I thought that uh, I'll do something uh, or compile something on the book of uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 in the beginning. Why do I have to do this? It is because you find that the creation week has been under attack. And uh, there is a lot of uh, skepticism when uh, you come to the Bible and more so the creation week and the book of Genesis. And so I thought it will be best that we try to see what we can glean out of this study. And... Uh, uh, I just pray that uh, it will be of uh, a blessing to all of us. And so in this world where um, true education has been lost, faith in the Bible is uh, waning away. And uh, there's a lot of hatred when it comes to the word of God. You have the evolution theory. You have whatever thing that you can call it. But amidst the voices of confusion, God says that he will have representatives in this world that can be able to declare forth his um, truth. And uh, we just pray that uh, we may be within the group of those who shall be able to speak the truth in love. And uh, when correction comes, that we shall accept it and that the Lord will uh, humble our hearts in humility that we may be able to accept uh, the truth in whichever disguise and in whomsoever the Lord will uh, uh, see it fit to bring us the truth. And so in the beginning, now um, I'd I like to look at this. Um, in Desire of Ages, page 769.2 and also um, a good... Uh, uh, I'm a lover of uh, E.G. White writings. Um, she says this, In the beginning, the Father and the Son had rested upon the Sabbath after their work of creation, when the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them, Genesis 2.1. We read on, The Creator and all heavenly beings rejoiced in contemplation of the glorious sin. The morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, Job 38, verse 7. And so what uh, we are going to explore is Genesis 1, 1 to 30, but more so just this word in the beginning. And so in Patrick's and Prophets chapter 2 on the, on the issue of uh, creation, um, we find this. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was. He commanded, and it stood fast. Psalms 33, verse 6. Psalms 33, verse 9. He laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. And uh, in Education 134, that is PP 44.1. And in Education uh, 134.2, in the beginning... God, that is Genesis 1 1. Here alone can the mind, in it is eager questioning, fleeing as the dove to the ark, find rest. 
above, beneath, beyond, abides infinite love, working out all things to accomplish the good pleasure of his goodness. 2 Thessalonians 1 uh, verses 11. That is Education 134.2. And then in Education 134.3, uh, the invisible things of him in the creation of the world are perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity. Romans 1.20, revised version. But uh, their testimony can be understood only through the aid of the divine teacher. What man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2. 11 and then uh, uh, in uh, Great Controversy 658.3 concerning the condition of the earth in the beginning, the Bible record say that uh, it was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And so that is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and uh, looking at um, verse 2. Again, in uh, um, Lift him up, page 47.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven, the earth. And then in 47.2, uh, she says, The Father and the Son engaged in the mighty wondrous work they had contemplated of creating the world. The earth came forth from the hand of the Creator, exceedingly beautiful. There were mountains and hills and plains, and interspersed among them were rivers and bodies of water. The earth was not one extensive plain, but the monotony of the scenery was broken by hills and mountains, not high and rugged as they now are, but regular and beautiful in shape. The bare high rocks were never seen upon them, but lay beneath the surface, answering as bones to the earth. The waters were regularly dispersed. The hills, mountains, and very beautiful plains were adorned with plants and flowers and tall majestic trees of every description which were many times larger and much more beautiful than trees now are. The, the air was pure and healthful and the earth seemed like a noble palace. Angels beheld and rejoiced at the wonderful and beautiful works of God. Lift him up, page uh, 47, uh, paragraph 2. And then in uh, Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 283, paragraph 2. In the beginning, God made man in his own likeness. Our first parents listened to the voice of the tempter and yielded to the power of Satan. And so... What you find is that E.G. White is equating this phrase in the beginning with the creation week at the creation of uh, this uh, planet we are in, this world that we are in, and in the creation of Adam and Eve. Uh, and so while least that there have been an attack on this uh, doctrine of the beginning, and then uh, there are some who say that in that beginning of Genesis 1.1, Actually, the angels were created in that. Uh, far be it because uh, the angels, and we, we know the fall of Lucifer was his war against the father. And when he rebelled in heaven and was thrown down here, that is when God and his son did execute his um, uh, their, their, their plan of creating man and this world was created, which means that the angels were created prior to the creation of uh, this earth. And then we are told that um, when this earth was being created, the angels rejoiced. It can be that uh, the angels were created in that week and yet rejoicing while the creation was going on. And uh, just uh, continued on, uh, the early Seventh-day Adventist pioneers, how did they see this uh, beginning? Uh, we read from uh, uh, Jane Andrews, uh, and uh, this is, uh, I'll be able to give you a reference just in a minute. And uh, we pray that the Lord may hold the reins so that uh, we may be able to benefit it. Um, this is um, summons on Sabbath, summons on the Sabbath and the law, summons on the Sabbath and the law. 
page 176.8. He says, the first chapter of Genesis contains a record which commence with what the Holy Spirit calls the beginning. Of what is this beginning? Of eternity? Mr. F will not assert it, though he places this beginning in eternity. I .e. assert that the events of the six days of creation belong not to time, but to eternity. Perhaps Mr. F will say that the beginning is simply the beginning of our world history. But is it not true that God caused Moses to count time from that very point? What if Adam could not of his own knowledge count the number of days which preceded his existence? Could not Moses do it by the spirit of inspiration? And cannot we do it now by Moses' help? These are the questions that he poses. And then he goes ahead to say in on sermons on the Sabbath and the law, page 177, paragraph 1, but observe, Mr. F has the last six days of the eternity of the past, numbered, measured, and recorded. Then he teaches that time begins where those six days end, but it's not eternity as distinguished from time and measured duration. But it's not, but it's not eternity as distinguished from time and measured duration. And it's not time as distinguished from eternity, that part of duration which is measured by the Bible. And if these definitions be accepted as just, is it not manifest that the beginning of which Moses speaks is the commencement of measured time, i.e. the beginning of time, the point which marked it being the creative word that gave existence the heavens and the earth. And so... Jane Andrew says, Mr. F says that the six days of Genesis 1 are the last six days of eternity of the past. We say that they are the first six days of time. Which is right. If the remarks already made have failed to settle the question, let the reader give attention to the following point which cannot be evaded. Mr. F acknowledges the rest day of the creator to belong to time, but he denies this of the days which God employed in the work of creation. But observe that the day of God's rest is called the seventh day. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. This shows that the rest day of the Lord belongs to a series which commenced with what Moses calls the beginning. Mr. F must therefore admit that the six days belong to time or else assert that the seventh day belongs to eternity. As he cannot ascribe the seventh day to eternity, he must acknowledge the six days of creation to be the first six days of time that is the argument by jane uh, uh andrews uh, and uh, you remember that Jane andrews was one of uh, the best scholars that seventh day admiral had and we are not just talking about scholarship we are talking about the people who walked with god and had an experience with god unlike um, this generation which is involved in debates and arguing and putting forth what they know rather than what the Lord will teach them. And so I'm not taking the merits of Jane Andrews that he is correct, but uh, his argument seems plausible to me that uh, the beginning that we are talking of is the creation of this world and it rolls out time and we cannot evade that. Going to uh, Roswell Fenner Cottrell, uh, and this is um, this is um, the Bible class. The Bible class, page ten, paragraph one. The Bible class, page ten, paragraph one. Let us now look for the law of God in the part of the Bible called the Old Testament. The book of Genesis is a brief history of events, beginning with the creation of the world. And uh, that is um, Roswell Fenner, Cottrell, Uriah Smith. Uriah Smith, this is what he had. And uh, I'll be quoting from... Uh, this is, uh, this is um, Uriah Smith. And where are we quoting from? We are quoting from uh, Looking Unto Jesus. Page uh, 13 from paragraph 2. This is uh, looking unto Jesus. And 
paragraph, that is page 13, paragraph 2. He says, Thus are we brought to the epoch of the creation of our world. The scripture already referred to show us the part of Christ bore in this display of almighty power. When, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1. Christ was the creative agent through whom it was accomplished. For without him was not anything made that was made, John 1, 3. When the spirit of God moved or brooded upon the face of the waters, it was the spirit of Christ with its vivifying power that hovered over the deep. When God said, let the, there be light, and light was, Genesis 1, 3, it was Christ's voice that spoke, that God said Luther, which speaks not out of Christ's mouth, is not God. And when God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, it was Christ's eyes that swept over the glorious scene. When the morning stars sang together and all, the sons of God shouted for joy. It was Christ's work, the glory of which they were chanting in celestial shout and song. Job that eight, four to seven. When he spoke and it was done and commanded and it stood fast, Psalm 33, six to nine. It was Christ who pronounced the omnific word. And so objection three, the creation of the world according to the account of Moses took place but about 6,000 years ago. But the science of geology affords a burden of evidence that this world must have existed millions of ages. And uh, this is Adventist Review and Sabbath Hell at page 130, paragraph 5. Four. So this is an objection. Answer. The first chapter of Genesis in its details is not an account of the original creation of the globe, but of its adaptation to its purposes and of the introduction of man upon its surface. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When was the beginning? Does Moses say it was but 6,000 years ago? No such a thing. Moses says not one word upon the subject. For all we are told, it may have been millions of ages. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. How long had the earth remained this shapeless mass of inorganic matter? The Bible does not inform us. For all we can tell, it may have been through the long lapse of many ages. Moses simply informs us that the earth had been created in the beginning and was in this situation when God said, let there be light. But uh, here again, sound appears in attestation of the truth of scripture. By a process of investigation of petrified bones and organic remains, which it is not necessary here to endeavor to explain, the most eminent geologists are satisfied that the human race cannot have existed on this globe for a longer period than the asserted than that asserted by Moses. Thus, science, instead of contradicting the mosaic account, gives whatever influence she has in its favor. And that is Uriah Smith. E.J. Wagoner. E.J. Wagoner. It must be known to every reader of the Bible that from the beginning of the days of the week were known only by number as first, second, and third, Etal or etc. Only one, only one was named, and that was the seventh. Its name was Sabbath. Of course, it is so still. See the first chapter of Genesis and Exodus 28 to 11. Yet, in reality, Sabbath is not the name, but only the description of the seventh day. The word Sabbath simply tells what the day is a rest. For a Sabbath is the Hebrew word for rest. This is EJ. Uh, Wagona. This is um, uh, E.J. Wagona speaking. And he continues that um, um, in the Gospel of Creation, page 14, E.J. E. 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 Wagona continues to say, the Father himself addresses the Son as God and as Creator. The first chapter of Hebrews says that God has not at any time said to any of the angels, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. But unto the son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. And he has also said to the son, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Three, so we are, we are well assured that when we read in the first chapter of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It refers to God in Christ. So, 
he goes ahead when does the day begin at evening according to the record in genesis 1 and leviticus 23 32 we read that the jewish are directed to celebrate their sabbath from even unto even and this could not be unless they regarded other days as beginning at the same time but why is this is it an arbitrary requirement or is there a fixed reason why the day begins at evening it is not an arbitrary matter, but the natural day begins at evening because it cannot by any possibility begin at any other time. With the earth, when the earth was created, darkness was upon the face of the deep. The phrase in the beginning marks the beginning of time as distinguished from God's eternity. The speaking of the matter of the earth into existence marked the beginning of the first day of time and uh, this is ej wagona in uh, uh, science and times uh, page 795 paragraph 3 so in the beginning the science of the time page 14 uh, we are read, we read the brother who sent the following question says that there has been some dispute over them in the sabbath school this is ej wagona in the science of the time um uh, I think this is the sign of the time, volume 14. And then this is page 118, paragraph 24. So what does in the beginning refer to in the first verse of the Bible? That is the question. To the beginning of the first week or to some other time? The question is asked. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning of what? Not of God's existence because he is from eternity. Not the beginning of eternity because eternity has no beginning. Then the text must mean that in the beginning of time, God created the heaven and the earth. And this is in February 24, 1888, E.J. Wagona, Science, uh, uh, Science of the Times, page 118, paragraph 28. Now, a question is asked, was the earth created during the first week or was it simply fitted up then and created ages before? Now, here is the response. Time then begin with the first act of the creation of this earth. Now, read the first verses of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day, Genesis 1 to 5. Here we have the work of the first day. What was it? It was the creation of the heaven and the earth, the creation of light, and the separating of the light from the darkness, thus forming day and night. The measurement of time by days and nights must, of course, have begun as soon as time began. So, in the beginning refers to the first day of the first week of time in which the heaven and the earth were created. Number three, were the sun and moon created during the first week, as the Bible says, or were they created ages before? We have a response. Were the sun and the moon created during the first week, as the Bible says, or were they created ages before? We are quite inclined to believe that it was just as the Bible says. We know, not, we know it is not fashionable nowadays to believe the Bible in all particulars. And those who do so are considered as old foggish. But we have never yet found any more reliable authority than the Bible. We will advise our Sabbath schools to stick to the Bible and not run after the speculations of sons, falsely so-called. And uh, uh, Leroy Edwin Froome, this man, you know the history of this man and uh, people don't like him. But we shall quote him because uh, where the truth is, we shall believe it. Whether it is coming from Satan or it's coming from who, whatever it is. Because we are told there is one God and Satan believes that. And even the demons said that uh, Jesus Christ was the son of God. We could not refuse that because it came from the demons. And so uh, those who have an issue with little from accept it as it is the truth that the Lord gave to whomsoever he will give. 
Hero Throom in uh, conditional phase of our fathers, volume one, page uh, 273, paragraph three. Three heavens and earth, past, present, future. To understand the problem of the thief in paradise, it is necessary first to understand the background of the three heavens and earth. First of all, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1. Then Peter tells of two heavens and earths, the antediluvian heaven and earth. The heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, Second Peter 3, 5, and 6. These were the first. Those that followed the flood, Peter calls the heavens and the earth, which are now, Second Peter 3, 7, the next matching pair. Now, Robert Pearson, GC president, Robert Pearson also voiced support for biblical protology. He said on October 12, 1978, Already, brethren and sisters, there are subtle or subtle forces that are beginning to stir. Regrettably, there are those in the church who belittle the inspiration of the total Bible, who scorn the first 11 chapters of Genesis, who question the spirit of prophecy's short chronology of the age of the earth, and who subtly and not so subtly attack the spirit of prophecy. There are somehow there are some who point to the reformers and contemporary theologians as a source and the norm for Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. There are those who allegedly are tired of the hackened phrases of Adventism. There are those who wish to forget the standards of the church we love. There are those who throw off the mantle of uh, a peculiar people and those who go the way of the secular materialistic world. Fellow leaders, beloved, Brethren and sisters, don't let it happen. I appeal to you as honestly as I know how this morning, don't let it happen. I appeal to Andrews University, to the seminary, to Loma Linda University, don't let it happen. We are not Seventh-day Anglicans, not Seventh-day Lutherans. We are Seventh-day Adventists. This is God's last church with God's last message. And so and there have been a push among the Seventh-day Adventist theologians to uh, really uh, do away with the book of Genesis chapter 1. I don't just have time to go into this, but um, we can cover this, how we have evolution creationist and all this stuff that is coming in to belittle the short chronology of the Bible and to make people disbelieve in the book of Genesis 1. -1. Now, one, one person really did raise a question which uh, was important. If uh, the true science says that, um, or uh, I, I don't know the measurements of these things, uh, I can't pretend I know them, but uh, you find that uh, uh, those people who study geology and all this stuff, they have the way they measure the trunks of the tree and they can say this tree lived, uh, or this tree is uh, a million years old. And uh, they say they are still creationists, but they say this tree is a million years, and uh, there's much talk about that. Now, when I was hearing this, uh, I was able to ask uh, this brother that uh, was um, talking about this, and uh, I asked him, tell me one thing. How old was Adam on the first day? And uh, it seems that he knew what I, I was really asking, and uh, tried to, th to think about that. How old was Adam on the first day? On the first day, Adam was one day old. No one can dispute that. But then the body that Adam had, if uh, you could put it to compare with our body, how old would Adam be like? And uh, if uh, you can refer to the Jewish, because the, the Bible is a Jewish Bible. If, um, and in asking this, I, I'll ask like this. In the Jewish um, uh, uh, wedding model, what is um, the time frame or um, the age bracket of marriage? You'll find that uh, it is between 30 and 40. That is the age bracket. And so Adam can be said, while he was one day old, he was 30 years old. You see that? 
And so God could give us a tree today, which is one day old. But um, according to the measurement that you may have, and according comparing to the trees that uh, we have nowadays, you can say this tree is maybe 200 years old. But then the tree may be only one day old. So Adam was one day old, but no child of one day old can marry. Yet Adam married in that first week, which means that he was an old person. I mean, he was created that the structure was that of, let us say, 30 years old, but yet he was one day old. And so you, you can find my argument. Uh, and so when we meet such arguments, let us try to reason then like that. To me, I'll reason like that, that the same Adam, which was one day old, to me, he can be say he is 30 years old because no toddler who is born today can marry. But we know that Adam married the same day. He didn't finish 30 years, then married. No, he was created and then married at that time. And so this issue that uh, people can measure the tree and say it's a million years old. So the first week of the Bible happened millions years ago. It cannot match when you compare that with the scenario of Adam and Adam marrying Eve when he was one day old. Uh, I think that uh, makes sense if you understand what I'm saying. So, uh, uh, as we saw that the, there have been, um, there is even in advancing the doubting of the creation day uh, week. Uh, there's something I found out from uh, brother uh, Ryan Tucklin, when we were conversing this on Messenger, you know, on, on October 4th, uh, 2020. And uh, this is uh, what uh, Brother Ryan Tucklin had, and uh, I'd just like us to hear what he says. Genesis 1 1 is likely talking about perhaps our Milky Way galaxy at most, and not the entire universe and all that it contains. What gets recreated or destroyed in the end, I believe it is only what is associated with the creation of this earth and condemnated with sin. Maybe the universe was already created in some of the galaxy stars, other words, it is it. Before, I, I think he, this one, other worlds, it is it. Before getting to created our Earth, solar system, and maybe the Milky Way was included with that. The other theory is that there is an untold time between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. Perhaps creation of other other planets were taking place and before getting to this earth that was put in place in Genesis in 1.1. We are given so little detail outside of our earth history from the seventh day creation. I can't say that I understand it all, but obviously I would imagine that there was some space of time from the very beginning of all the created things by Christ to our earth. And prior to all that, the word was with God and this word was Christ who was begotten of God. Simply, Actually, what um, uh, Ryan is saying uh, in the last, I would imagine that there was some space of time from the beginning of all created things by Christ to our earth. So what he's saying, the creation of the angels, uh, the, creation, the creation of the angels and the creation of this earth is different. I mean, when we talk about Genesis 1-1, we are not referring to the creation of angels and uh, maybe they're aboard. No, we are talking in Genesis 1-1 about the creation of this earth, the place that we live in. And that is not the time that the angels were created for the angels were there before this earth was created. That is what I understood by him. And uh, if he comes across this video and I have misrepresented him, uh, he can reach me and... Uh, I'll be able to apologize uh, public about that. But I know he believes in the creation week and that is the point he was trying to make that the creation of the angels and the creation of this earth, there is space. It is not the same in the beginning in Genesis 1.1. Now, uh, continued on, there's something interesting in the Ministry of Magazine uh, archives of 2005, June, in the beginning, God. And uh, this is uh, what uh, we read. While this paper now in article form is not one that was presented at any of the faith and science conference convened over the last three years, it is one that was presented in appropriate venues during this time period and has had its influence on the dialogue. We believe that it contributes to our self-understanding as Seventh-day Adventists when it comes to the issues of creation, evolution, faith, and science. 
It is therefore included in our ministry faith and science series. At it is 1980 World Session in Dallas, that is another year that uh, we have to forget. The General Conference of Seventh day Adventists officially voted the church statement of faith in terms of 27 fundamental beliefs. And you know what was passed then. Belief number six states God is creator of all things and has revealed in scripture the authentic account of his creative activity. In six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth and all living things upon the earth and rested on the seventh day of that first week. Thus, he established the Sabbath as a perpetual memorial of his completed creative work. The first man and woman were made in the image of God as their crowning work of creation, given dominion over the world and charged with the responsibility to care for it. When the world was finished, it was very good, declaring the glory of God and the text are uh, given them. This statement spells out the Seventh-day Adventist belief, A, that God created heaven and earth and all that is therein in six days, and B, that the Sabbath is a continual reminder of the six-day creation. On the basis of biblical chronology and some statements of Ellen White, Seventh-day Adventists have tradition ally believed. Seventh-day Adventists have tradition ally believed that this creation took place about 6,000 years ago, that is uh, in the time that we are living in. Traditional creation models among Adventists Two different views in regard to the creation record of Genesis 1 have prevailed in Adventist church. So let us look at uh, one. Number one, the Adventist gap theory. This view understands Genesis 1-1 as a reference to the creation of the universe, including the earth, in its raw state billions of years ago. Think about that. You remember what uh, uh, the GC president was uh, really uh, contending with. Several thousand years ago, the Holy Spirit hovered above the waters and the six-day creation took place. This view was predominant among Adventist pioneers. M.C. Wilcox in 1898 wrote, when did, God, when did God create or bring into existence the heaven and the earth in the beginning? When this beginning was, how long a period it covered? It is idle to conjecture, for it is not revealed that it was a period which antedated the six days. Work is evident. In Genesis 1, the signs of time, July 7, 1898, paragraph 16. The same view is found among Adventists today. For example, Clyde Webster, former associate director of the Geoscience Research Institute, in his book, The Earth Rights, there is no reference in scripture within creation week that addresses the creation of water or the mineral content of dry land. The only reference made to their, to their creation is in the beginning. It seems possible then that the elementary inorganic matter is not bound by limited age as is the living matter. And so this is the gap theory. Uh, we are told by Cottrell when this beginning was how long a period it covered. It is idle to conjecture for it is not revealed that it was period which candidated the six days work is evident. And so the earth in its raw state billions of years ago. Continued on. More recently at the 2002 General Conference sponsored Faith and Science Conference, Richard Davidson from Andrews University stated that the biblical text Genesis 1 leaves room for either A, young pre-fossil rock created as part of the seven days of creation with apparent old age. You see that what I was saying? That a rock can be one day, but all having an old age. Or be much older pre-fossil earth rock with a long interval between the creation of the inanimate raw materials on earth described in Genesis 1, 1, 2, and the seven days of creation week described in Genesis 1, 3, which I found the preferable interpretation. So he prefers the rocks that existed long time ago. And um, he, he prefers, and this is Andrews University, he, he, he doesn't limit this thing to the seven, uh, to the literal six days of creation or the, 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 the first week of creation. And I said 
Option A is plausible to me. Young pre-fossil rock created as part of the seven days of creation with apparent old age. As even Adam was one day old, but yet old, old enough to marry. So contrary to the gap, to the gap or ruin restoration theory of the Schofield Bible, Seventh day Adventists do not believe that life existed on earth prior to Genesis 1. But you have just seen in one, there are those who are espousing the same. That it existed long time ago and uh, there was a gap theory and then the earth was created. But here he continues to say only non fossil bearing rock can be million, billions of years old. While this is possibility, Genesis 1, 1 to 3 does not indicate that there is a gap between verses 1 and 2, as people are saying that there is a gap theory. Furthermore, Exodus 20, 11 says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. This text seems to say that with, in six days God created everything connected with our earth. At any rate, the gap view does not really help us when it comes to the fossil bearing geology geologic column since death can have occurred only after the fall and not and and you know this gap theory to me all always sounds like a, a big bang theory that um, survival for the fittest out of death comes life you have to study the big bang theory and uh, see what actually it is saying and to me it seems that it is out of the survival for the fittest and um, then we have life out of death uh, issue when it comes to the gap theory. But uh, we find that um, it was after that seen that we had any kind of death on this earth. There is the option number two in Adventist that exists. So option number one, the gap theory, I, I don't believe in it that there is a gap between verse one and verse two, no. So we go to number two, the original creation account. This view sees the six days creation week beginning in verse one, not in verse three. In other words, heaven and earth in verse one refers only to our planetary system or our Milky Way and not to the universe as a whole. This is what um, uh, actually Ryan Tucklin was talking about. Brother Ryan Tucklin is a good friend of mine. The reason is that in Isaiah 65, 17 and Revelation 21, 1, heaven and earth do not refer to a recreation of the universe, but only to that part of the universe contaminated by sin. This was Jane Andrews' view. He believed that the universe was created in one day. If we could be placed back some 6,000 years in the past, and from that point survey the vast abyss of space now studied with the stars of heaven, what should we behold? Blank nothing. The host of heaven did not then exist. Our earth itself had not risen into being. The vast infinite of space was literally as Job expresses it, the empty space, and that which filled it was nothing, Job 26, 7. Utter and profound darkness rested upon the great void. Even the materials which subsequently formed the world had no existence. Jane Andrews, The Memorial of Creation, Review and Herald, page 43, paragraph 17, in April 7, 1874. Ellen White wrote in 1904, in connection with the pantheism crisis, and uh, take heed of this. This is what we read. The theory that God did not create matter when he brought the world into existence is without foundation. In the formation of our world, God was not indebted to pre-existing matter. Ellen G. White, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8. Uh, Mountain View, California, Pacific Press, 1948, uh, uh, that is uh, when they released it. And so, while this statement can be used by both positions, in view of all her other statements on creation, I believe she held the second view. Whatever the case, both positions hold to a six-day creation and see the creation account as the basis for the Sabbath commandment in Exodus chapter 20. And so, this statement by E.G. White is the most uh, vivid statement that you can read that no, no life existed prior and God was not indebted to the existing matter to do creation of this earth. So evolution and the Adventist church. 
Until 1950s, Adventists on the whole accepted one or the other of the two creation models. During the last few decades, however, some Adventists have begun introducing a third creation model, theistic evolution. This is an attempt to harmonize evolutionary biology with the Christian faith. In 1957, the General Conference established the Geoscience Research Institute, located today at the campus of Loma Linda University in California. The institute focuses mainly on the biological, geological, and paleontological question regarding the origin of life and uh, the past history of our planet in the context of creation account given in the book of Genesis, Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia, Second Revised Edition, Commander Reference Series, Volume 10, Hangston, MD Review, and Herald, 1996. During the first two decades of its work, Tensions existed among the scientists of the Institute because of different views on how to interpret the past. Some took the statements of Scripture and Ellen White seriously and attempted to interpret the facts of science accordingly. Others were willing to consider seriously evidence from radioactive time clocks that placed creation week hundreds of millions of years ago. Now, just think about this. And this is found in Ron, Ron Numbers, the creationist, New York. And uh, this is North. And searched for ways to interpret scripture in the light of this view. In time, all the so-called progressive scientists left the institute. And uh, around 1980, when Ariel Roth became director of the institute, only scientists who accepted, only scientists who accepted the scriptural record as it reads were on the staff. So those who didn't accept the Bible as it read left the institution. In Adventist schools and universities, however, the picture was different. A number of science teachers tended to lean more and more toward the theistic evolution. And this is uh, uh, placing the creation week hundreds of millions of years ago. The Geoscience Research Institute organized field conferences in North America, Europe, and Australia that informed the leadership of the church, teachers, and ministers about the problems of the evolutionary theory and offered a solution to the geologic column on the basis of the biblical flood. One of these tours in 1977, the General Conference President Robert Pearson realized that some of our scientists tended toward theistic evolution, and that is the statement we read and he was appealing to Loma Linda Andrews University to stop doubting the creation week. He asked the vice presidents, Duncan Ever, Willis Hackett, Hackett, and Richard Hamill to formulate two doctrinal points, one about inspiration and the other about creation, which the scientists and Bible teachers in our school should accept. Their efforts on behalf of Pearson creedal statement prompted one campus theologian to confess that he could see no substantive difference between the actions of the general conference president and those of a pope. James L. Hayward, edition creation reconsidered, Roosevelt, California Association of Adventist Forum, 2000. About the same time that Ariel Roth became director of the Geosans Research Institute, Gerhard Hessel, Hassel became dean of theological seminary at Andrews. Through these appointments, Elder Pearson hoped to condemn the pluralism among the theologians and scientists. The progressive or more liberal thinking scholars and scientists, however, were frustrated. They turned to Richard Ritland, who had retired in 1982, and asked him to organize a field conference for the Association of Adventist Forums. The conference took place in, in 1985 with about a thousand participants. For 10 days, they studied the geological formations in Utah and Wyoming, and another five days were spent at a study conference in Yellowstone Park. Conference presenter dealt with three themes, earth history, the biblical record, and responses by Christians seeking to reconcile their faith with the evidence from sun. The manifestations of Adventism creation in spectrum, page uh, 25, paragraph 3, March 1966, 1996. A report of this field conference published in Spectrum stated the conference generated some feelings of apprehension, partly because not all the familiar answers seemed adequate to explain what we saw, and because participants were concerned that the issue of origins might be divisive 
for the Adventist Church, Karen Bartholomew Pilgrim in the Pilgrimage in the Rockies, the AF Geology Tour Spectrum 16.4-1985. And so what um, we are really seeing is um, a people who wants to shift from uh, what the Bible says and add in more science that really conflict with that, yet they want the tool to be hands and gloves to match. And so there were concerns and at Josan's Field Conference in 1991, which newly elected General Conference President Robert Falkenberg attended, Elio Roth informed the participant that a number of Adventist scientists had become theistic evolutions. Now, we have to think about this. Are people who believe that uh, the creation weeks is billions of years ago. These are the Bible teachers. These are the professors and these are the lecturers in the seminary. And they believe such a things. They doubt the Bible. They doubt the creation week. The president was able to see this. He raised an alarm. Then in the year 2000, the Association of Adventist Forum published the book Creation Reconsidered, which contains the 28 lectures given at the 1985 Yellowstone Conference. A number of the contributors to this volume advocate theistic evolution. And so we have two views in the church today. And uh, based on recent publications of Adventist theologians and scientists in regard to creation, we can say that today there are basically two views in the Adventist church. One sees creation extending over millions of years. The other holds to a six-day creation several thousand years ago, or as we say, 6,000 years ago. And so this representative of the theistic evolution, one of them, Richard M. Rickland, a retired biologist who taught in Loma Linda and Andrews, at the field conference in 18, 1985, in his lecture on the geologic column, which seems to indicate that life on Earth existed millions of years ago, he traced the development and the evidence for the geologic column. He concluded by saying, and I quote him, like a clock for organizing the day, the geologic column has become like a calendar for relating and organizing the vast body of information and theories that has become the essential code to which the records of Earth history relate. It has become an indispensable tool not only for general studies, but also for those special areas related to the flow of energy and life throughout time to origins, to time to evolutionary change, all of immediate concern to those probing the meaning of life existence and governance of cosmos. And this is from Richard M. Ritland, the geologic column in Hayward, edition creation, considered page 34. Another person who is... Uh, who has been a teacher uh, and a geophysicist at the Canadian University College, that is Richard uh, Botomley. At the same conference, he dealt with the topic of dating the rocks. After explaining the radioactive dating methods, he showed that fossil bearing rocks have a certain sequence. The bottom rock must have been laid down before the younger rock on top of it. Since the dates for the individual layers are spread over hundreds of millions of years, he concluded that the layers of rock do represent long intervals of time and that the rocks involved could not have been deposed, deposited over a short period of time. And this is uh, uh, dating of rocks um, and uh, the, the flood. Another person is Richard L. Hamill, former president of Andrews, General Conference Vice President. After his retirement, actually, Dr. Hamill studied scientific theories plate, tectonics, fossils, radioactive dating, ETC. And uh, after nine years of study, he came to the conclusion that animals were living on the earth millions of years ago before these continental plates separated. Now, uh, allow me to just blow this up. Brothers and sisters. And so you, you can understand that um, there are a lot of voices in our midst about the creation week. And if we can doubt the creation week, then we don't have the Sabbath at all. And I'll repeat this statement by Richard Elhami. He says, 
After nine years of study, he came to the conclusion that animals were living on the earth millions of years ago before these continental plates separated. And moreover, as I go to looking into the geologic column, I had to recognize that the geologic column is valid, that some forms of life were extinct before other forms of life came into existence. The steadily accumulated, accumulating evidence in the natural world has forced a re-evaluation in the way I look and understand and interpret parts of the Bible, quoted in Hay, Hayward, uh, and this is um, Spectrum. In 1996, he called himself a progressive creationist. So I let that sink in. These are our teachers. Chris Guy, a theologian at La Sierra University, at the Faith and Science Conference in 2002, Dr. Guy presented a lecture, Interpreting Genesis 1 in the 21st Century, that was later published in Spectrum. He interprets Genesis 1 theologically, i.e. he sees Genesis 1 not as a literalistic descript description of a process, but as a spiritual interpretation of the universe origins, nature, and destiny. That means, read theologically, the explanation of creation in Genesis 1 is complementary also to scientific explanation of the history of the cosmos, the earth, life, and humanity. Taking the two explanations together yields an intellectually satisfying and spiritually illuminating account of creation. So the week is not literal, but spiritual. As far as Ellen White is concerned, he believes that if she were living now, knowing what we know today about natural history, she would undoubtedly avoid making a divisive issue of interpretation of Genesis 1. Very interesting. And so... Those are some of the people just um, trying to tear Genesis 1 apart. But uh, God be glorified. Still, there are some voices who believe in the literal week and do not have the gap theory of Genesis 1-1 one, one and Genesis 1-2. One, one of them being Jim uh, Gibson, and uh, I'd like, I like to read uh, what um, he says. This is what uh, Jim Gibson, representative of, of uh, a six-day uh, creation. Jim Gibson, a biologist and the director of the Geoscience Research, Research Institute. In 1998, at the European Geoscience Field Conference, Jim Gibson stated that the long-age viewpoint makes certain unfavorable implications about the character of God and the reliability of the Bible. Since I give epistemological primacy to the scriptures, I accept the Genesis record as a matter of faith. Having adopted that position, I am encouraged that much of the evident claim to support long ages can be reinterpreted in the context of short chronology. Praise the Lord. Randall Younger, archaeologist at Andrews University with a background in biology. At Andrews University, he and John Baldwin teach the course Issues in Origin, in which they present the traditional creationist viewpoint. Yonka wrote the Sabbath School Quarterly on creation for the fourth quarter of 1999. In the introduction to the lesson, he states, Seventh-day Adventists take Genesis 1 to 11 as an accurate historical account of origins of life on earth. We accept the biblical accounts, straightforward testimony that the creation of life on this planet and it is variation habitats occurred in six literal 24-hour days. Based on the available biblical data, we also believe that the period of time since the creation has been a short chronology of a few thousand years, as opposed to millions of years required by the general theory of evolution. And uh, Leonard Brand, as we bring this to an end, I'll read Leonard Leonard Brand and Richard Davidson then make uh, the last few points. A biologist at Loma Linda University, he says that I conclude that the Bible indicates that current geological theory in certain respect is an incorrect interpretation of the data. Our task is to go back to the research lab and develop a more correct theory. And so in the introduction to his book, Faith, Reason, and Earth History, he writes that a central thesis of this book is that a creationist can indeed be an effective scientist. 
Leonard Brand, Faith and Reason, Art History. He champions interventionism, a view of history that recognizes the important role of intelligent intervention in history. In the chapter on faith and science, he says in regard to, the to geology, science has proposed a theory that fossil-bearing geological deposits have accumulated over hundreds of millions of years. I conclude that the Bible indicates that current geological theory in certain respect is an incorrect interpretation of data, this thing of millions of years. Richard Davidson, he says, Davidson is a prominent theologian at Andrews University. Davidson is a proponent of uh, the Adventist gap theory, i.e. Genesis 1-1 speaks about the creation of the universe only from verse 3 on, on is the creation week in view. In regard to the interpretation of Genesis 1, he says, based upon the testimony of the Genesis account and later intertextual allusion to this account, I must affirm the literal historical nature of Genesis 1 and 2 with a literal creation week consisting of six consecutive, contiguous, creative, natural 24-hour days followed immediately by a literal 24-hour seventh day, during which God rested, blessed, blessed and sanctified the Sabbath as a memorial of creation. And so the view of Jack Provencia, in the face of scientific facts, a six-day creation a few thousand years ago is no longer acceptable to many Adventist scholars and scientists. On the other hand, conservative, conservative Adventist scholars cannot accept any view that persists death before human beings live on the earth. Because Paul in Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. The Lomalinda physician and theologian Jack Provencher therefore has proposed a different solution. He has suggested that Adventists consider the ruined restoration theory as propounded by the Schofield Bible. According to this view, when Lucifer was cast out of heaven to the earth, he was given a long time to work out his principles. This included genetic experimentation resulting in the evolutionary process, which ultimately led to the development of human-like apes. At some more recent time, Provencia suggested God stepped in and created the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Although this view combines the conservative view with the scientific data of death before Adam, it has received little support from either study. So, recent faith and science conferences. At the annual council in 2001, the General Conference Executive Committee organized a series of conferences on faith and science during the years 2002 to 2004. The first one in 2002 was an international conference in Ogden, Utah. More than 80 scientists, Sandys, theologians and church administrators from different parts of the world began discussing the interrelationship between faith and science. Topics range from the hominid fossil record to Ellen White's view of science. The conference revealed the seriousness and breadth of differences concerning questions of origin that are present in the Adventist today. And so during 2003 and the first half of 2004, most divisions held seminar faith and science conferences in their territories. The formal discussion came to an end in August 2004 and the second international conference in Denver, Colorado. The new element in this conference was a discussion on the ethics of decent dealing with the ethical responsibility of those who differ in significant ways from the biblical position of the church on the topic of creation. The discussion was open, candid, and highly professional. It was obvious that a small number of individual scientists and theologians did not support or felt uncomfortable with the biblical doctrine of creation in six literal consecutive days as clearly revealed in Genesis 1. This was uh, reported by Angel Manuel Rodriguez, Second International Faith and Science Conference, a report, Reflections, uh, page 9. So there was no attempt in the part of the church leaders to modify or change our fundamental belief on creation. This was clearly stated by Elder John Paulsen, the conference, the general conference president, before the discussion were initiated. However, such a discussion cannot be avoided because the theory of evolution and the Adventist doctrine of creation represent two antagonistic and fundamentally diverse worldviews. Unfortunately, theistic evolution is one view that is being held and taught by a number of Seventh-day 
Adventist today. So I want us to think again. Where are we heading as a church? It is important for the church to be aware that neither evolutionists nor creationists have all the answers in this debate as they discuss these things. But why are they not having the answers as they themselves are reporting? It's because that we have not subjected our views of Genesis 1-1 to faith. When whatever is not of faith, Paul says it is sin. And when we start doubting what has been written and place instead of faith our scientific results which seem to contradict what faith should be, then we understand we are in the realm of doubting what God has said. And so, I personally are reaffirm what the deal called understanding of Genesis 1 to 11 is. The seven days of creation account were literal 24 hour days forming a week, identical in the time to what we now experience as a week. And uh, that uh, whatever happened and at, at, at that account can only be taken in by faith. Because if we start doubting these things, where will we stop? Because it is only one step into um, uh, being uh, uh, pessimistic about other things in the Bible. We can reinvent the wheel and reinterpret things the way we like it. And we can become theistic evolutions and have these gap theories. But uh, what will we be doing? We will be creating a stepping stone to doubting so many other things. And then the issue of true education. How will we actually uh, see it? Uh, how will we approach it? And then with all these confused voices, when we send our children to this school, what shall be they taught? How different is it with uh, the Big Bang Theory and all these voices in other denominations that we have? And so, my appeal and uh, my view is that uh, we may start looking at the Bible and accepting it the way it is without uh, starting to doubt it. There, there are many things which are happening around us and uh, we are uh, in the last lap of the earth history. What shall it be of us if uh, we start doubting th these things and uh, putting in question? And so I I'd like to close with uh, what uh, the president had for us. I'd like to close with what the president has had for us, Elder Pearson. I'd like to read his statement as I close this. This is um, Elder Robert Pearson, the General Conference President in 1978, in October 12th. This is what he had to say, and this is where we are closing at. As he saw the inroads of evolution coming in in our church, I like the statement that he said. Already, brethren and sisters, there are subtle forces that are beginning to stir. Regrettably, there are those in the church who belittle the inspiration of the total, the inspiration of the total Bible, who scorn the first eleven chapters of Genesis, who question the spirit of prophecy's short chronology of the age of the earth, and who subtly, and not so subtly, attack the spirit of prophecy. There are some who point to the reformers and contemporary theologians as a source and the known for Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. There are those who allegedly are tired of the hack and phrase of Adventism. There are those who wish to forget the standards of the church we love. There are those who will throw off the mantle of a peculiar people and those who will go the way of the secular materialistic world. Fellow elders, fellow leaders, 
Beloved brethren and sisters, don't let it happen. I appeal to you as honestly as I know how this morning, don't let it happen. I appeal to Andrews University, to the seminary, to Loma Linda University, don't let it happen. We are not Seventh-day Anglicans, not Seventh-day Lutherans. We are Seventh-day Adventists. This is God's last charge with God's last message. And... Uh, May the Lord bless us and uh, may he continue guiding us into all truth. And let us have faith in the Bible. Let us not put a doubt on the text. Let us let not the learning do away with the faith. Although we are called to stand into truth, both spiritual and intellectual, yet this intellectualism doesn't do away with faith doesn't do away with spiritual. And the things of the spiritual are spiritually designed. And it's God who revealed them. And God is in true science. But any sign that will contradict what God has given to the church, then we must reject it and accept what the Spirit of God has given us in time before. And so in the beginning, that is the beginning of the time, of this earth, God created the heavens and the earth. And may this be our belief. So that when Satan comes with his theories and will bring doubts to what is written, then we shall go back and just believe what the Bible says and go alongside it all the way to the whichever point it will lead us. Even if we become little on this earth. More so, the kingdom is for the little flock. And so, may the Lord bless his church. May the Lord bless his people. And more so, may he give us the faith to be able to withstand all the arrows that shall be thrown on our side. And with us, many remarks. i like us to pray and close at this point. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much that uh, you have given us a moment to look uh, into this uh, material. And so I pray that uh, those who will come in contact with them, that uh, they shall be blessed. And above all, Lord, that uh, we shall continue praising together as a people. And so give us the spirit of humility. Give us the faith that is needed for such a time as this when the Bible is becoming so unpopular book to many. Lord, as the greater the darkness, so greater the light in us that shall shine. Help us to correspond to this darkness with even a greater light. And so forgive us our iniquities, cleanse us from all transgressions, and guide us into the safe harbor, even until the end of the age. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and be with you. If you need the material uh, of what I was presenting, please put just in the link and uh, I'll be able to respond both on Facebook or YouTube. Otherwise, God bless and bye for now.